Hey guys, and welcome to a very impromptu video. So for those who followed my channel for a consistent amount of time, you know that last year I attempted to read my entire physical TBR in one year. That was my goal at the beginning of 2023. And I actually completed that as of August, yes, August uh, of 2023. And I technically, even though I did start in January, I was doing it mostly in November. And when I came back, from leaving booktube, I asked if you guys would be interested in seeing my thoughts of what it was like going through my entire physical TBR and kind of the psychology of like, how do I feel now, now that my physical TBR doesn't exist anymore? And I still have a TBR. I still have a bunch of books I want to read on Goodreads. I still have, I still have a notebook of books that I want to read. I still have quite a few books on my Kindle. So it's not like I don't have a TBR, but I don't have a physical TBR as in I don't have books that are sitting on my bookshelf that are unread. Well, technically I think I have like six on my bookshelf that I just went out and bought in the last couple months, but I don't have the same physical TBR I did a year ago. And you guys were interested in seeing that video. So I decided to film, take a break from doing my challenge of writing a book in four months and just sit down and have a chatty video and talk to you about how it went, my challenges, some techniques I found that helped me succeed. This is going to be a very rambly video because I did not script it at all. So for a little context, I started at the November 2022 mark. I started reading my physical TBR then and at that point I had 137 books. Um, so not as giant as a lot of physical TBRs I see. I see people who have like hundreds and hundreds of physical TBR books and that you know would be a challenge that might be a lot harder to do. And it also is based on your own pacing. On average, I read between like 100 to 200 books a year. So for me, it was very feasible, I knew, to read those 137 books. Whereas if you have a type of person who only reads five to 10 books a year, it's not feasible to expect yourself to suddenly read 140 books in a year. So you have to take into account what type of person, what type of reader you are. Now, there were a few techniques that I found really helped me in finishing all these books. And one was simply getting the books on audio book. Uh, where I work, I am able to, while I'm working, listen to audiobooks. So quite a few of like the extremely long classics I had had on my list, like for example, I had The Pickwick Papers uh, by Charles Dickens. I had um, The Brothers Karamazov by Fedor Dostoevsky, uh, very long classics like that. I was able to knock those out of the park relatively easy by listening to them in audiobook format when I was at work. And so that really helped me. LibriVox was an exceptional resource. They have an app where you can basically download uh, audiobooks of classical works in the public domain that were recorded by volunteers. It's an amazing resource. And so I did that for most of the books that were older that uh, were not available through my library. I also have Libby, which is an app on your phone that is connected to the library system that you can get a whole bunch of audiobooks through if you have a library card. Uh, and it will also depend on what library system you are part of. I'm actually still part of two library systems. The one I still have a library card for from Minnesota and then the one I'm currently part of in Ohio. I know that the one in Minnesota has a lot more audiobooks on there than the one in Dayton does. So audiobooks definitely saved me. Um, another thing that really helped was for me personally, I am a massive mood reader. So I thought it would be a really challenging idea to try to read my entire physical TBR because it really depends on what mood I am. And certain weeks and months, I definitely struggled. There was one month I think I only read three or four books and I should have been reading like 13 or 14. But I think what really helped me is I didn't set a monthly TBR. Instead, I said, oh, I'll just pick up whatever book I want. So, you know, one month I may say, okay, I'm going to tackle the entire collection of Sherlock Holmes. That was such a fun month. I really love just reading through the entire collection of Sherlock Holmes. Really adore uh, Doyle's writing. He's a great author. Or, you know, I could say, hey, I really want like a short book and I could tackle like Sense of Sensibility and Sea Monsters. And that was, you know, a 30 to 400 page book that was quite light. And so I tried to balance 
um, what I was reading with my mood. So depending on if I was in the mood for a classic or depending if I was in the mood for a nonfiction, if I wanted to be informed about something. So I really found it helpful to not have a physical TBR and plan out month by month. And instead, I just had a big bulk list of all the books that I had in my physical TBR. And when I finished a book, I would cross that out. And then at the end of the month, I would add up um, all the books that I had read that month and say, oh, let's say I read 10 books that month. And I also found it really helpful to um, keep a count of my pages specifically because if you only finish four books in a month and you wanted to do 10, that can be very discouraging. But if you look at, say, oh, I read Pickwick Papers, which was like 800 pages, that really equates to like almost three 300 page books. And so if you read that in a month, like one month, uh, actually, I think it was over like two month period, I read the entire collection of H.P. Lovecraft. And my collection is like over over a thousand pages, like almost 1200 pages. And I think that month I really only read like three or four books total, but because I read that like a thousand page book and I added up the page count of all the pages of the books I had read, I actually felt more accomplished because I realized that in the previous month when I had only when I had read 10 books, I actually read less pages than I did in the month where I read H.P. Lovecraft just because that one book text was just so long. So it helps to keep yourself motivated, not just looking at like the books you completed, but also the challenging level of each book. Um, there's certain books that like you may have had on your TBR a lot longer um, that it feels much more accomplished if you complete them than it would be a book that you just bought last week. So there's a lot of ways to keep yourself motivated and to try different techniques that I thought, thought really helped me and just keeping up motivation and just having people around you who are like, yeah, this is really cool. Um, you know, whether it was my booktube community, whether it was my family and friends in my real life that were like, oh, how are you doing with like your goal? And that really motivated me to keep it going. So there's so many techniques that I use that really helped me, but I think the number one technique was definitely audiobooks. Audiobooks saved my life. Another technique that really helped me was not feeling bad about DNFing any of my books. I think that if you've had a book on your physical TBR for a decade and I started reading them and I wasn't really enjoying them, you have to let yourself DNF if you really aren't enjoying a book. Like why should you waste your time when there are millions of books, thousands of books that are coming out every single year, you, you know, much less the backlog of books that have come out the last hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, why would you waste your time reading a book you aren't enjoying when there's thousands of other books that you could pick up? I think there was a very small minority of books my, from my physical TBR that I actually DNF'd. Um, there were some books that I was like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this. Let me just skim forward and not really read the details and get to the end. There were some books that were like that. Um, but it really helped me to feel motivated by saying, no, you don't have to force yourself to sit down and read a book that you really aren't enjoying simply for the fact that it is on your TBR. The next question is, uh, what now? Uh, so my goal right now with my reading, even though right now I'm focusing very much on my writing, so I really doubt I will be reading as much. Um, it's really nice to just give myself the permission to read as much or as little as I want without, you know, thinking of, oh, I have so many things to read for booktube or for my physical TBR or, you know, I have so much space on my bookshelf that's taken up by my physical TBR. There's this immense sense of relief by not having that anymore. Um, but there's also a little bit of sadness because I'm like, no, I can't just go to my bookshelf and look at like a hundred books and say, Ooh, what do I feel like reading today? Uh, I have to actually you know, go to the library or go out and maybe buy a new book. Um, but I haven't hit that super much because like I said, I've been focusing on my writing more. And also I have very much been extremely busy, whether with um, work, my husband and I are, we just got pre-approved for a loan. So we're going to start looking at houses um, soon. And it's just life is very busy right now. And I really 
want to put all my effort and work into running a house. And I want to look at reading more as like an accessory that, hey, if I don't read for a week, that's okay. I don't care if I don't read for a week. Um, And I want that to be more of my philosophy of reading. I want to do it purely for enjoyment and not force myself or like feel that I need to read a lot. Uh, And not having a physical TBR has been kind of incredible. Uh, Now I do have a small physical TBR. So what I'm going to do is I have a three tiered cart that's very small and I'm going to set aside the top shelf for any physical TBR that I currently have. And right now on there, I have like a couple books I'm borrowing from friends uh, or like my husband that they want me to read. Um, I'm, I have like maybe five or six that I bought from the dollar book swap that all the books were a dollar while they're now dollar 25, but quite a few of them I got were like paperbacks, which they have two paperbacks for a dollar 25, which is an amazing price. And I think what I'm going to do is let my physical TBR only be that big. So I'm never going to let my physical TBR build up as much as it did, which when I was younger, that's exactly what I would do. I would have a few books that I bought and then I would read those books and I'd buy a few more and then read those books. And it was never where I let my physical TBR build up so much. But I think it was once I started making my own money, once I had my own money and I wasn't like a youth or a child anymore, I was able to like go out and just buy things, buy whatever I want. And like, especially if it's at the Goodwill or like cheap thrift book places, you know, you can walk out of there with 10 books for like $15. And it's like, well, why wouldn't I do that? And so I think I ended up um, changing my philosophy to you know, buying whatever I wanted, impulse buying, and separating the process of collecting books with with reading books. And don't get me wrong, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with separating those two hobbies. Um, But for me personally, it was giving me anxiety having all these huge unread books and not having even known if they were something that I would want to have in my house, uh, want to take up precious space, you know, how was I to know if it it was actually good or not? You know, it, it might be sitting around for 10 years and I didn't know if I liked it or not. So I think I'm going to definitely just keep my physical TBR down to, I think at most like 10 books can fit on that top shelf. And that's my entire physical TBR. That's all that's going to be. And that gives me the permission to have like a fall, small physical TBR. You know, I, I'm not going to say, hey, the instant I buy a book, I need to read it and give myself that much like control. <laughs> um, that seems a little bit much, but it also says, hey, you need to lim- limit yourself. You need to be disciplined. You shouldn't just go out and buy like a hundred books. Uh, you need to really think about what books you want to put on your shelf. I've also started to... um think a lot more about like what I want in my house and what brings me the greatest pleasure. Am I turning into a minimalist? I might be slightly turning into a minimalist where a part of me just wants to get rid of a whole bunch of my books. And of course there will always be the books that like were were some of my favorites as a child or like are some of my favorite books or I really love a certain copy that I own. But a lot of the books that I have like I'll look at them and say, oh yeah, I'll, I'll reread it someday, but I know I probably won't. And so yeah, right now I'm at, in the mode of, yep, yeah, I want to get rid of books. I want to get rid of a lot of my books. And my husband and I soon moving from our apartment to a house, I might be like going through my books and getting rid of a crap ton. Um, and so that was another reason I wanted to fin- finish my physical TBR so that, you know, all those books... I didn't have to move them. And I feel like I am currently in the minority. And and this is not bad on, you know, me shaming anyone for having a bit of physical TBR. It just feels very nice to, you know, say, hey, I don't have a physical TBR. I don't have a large physical TBR. And for some, you know, ha- having a whole bunch of unread books may be wonderful. But for me, it just stressed me out more. Uh, and there there was something so liberating when I finished my last book. Oddly enough, I'm pretty sure my last book that I finished was Shakespeare. I have read every single Shakespeare play now, including the sonnets. And like the only one I had to DNF, oof, 
oh, I don't know. It was, it was the, the rape of someone. And oh my gosh, it was the, it was horrific. And it was told almost in the perspective. It was like a short poem and it was told in the perspective of the villain. And I just, I couldn't, I, I could not continue reading it. Um, it was too unpleasant. <laughs> I've decided also I like lighter books and I like, you know, the, the world is so serious and I have so many stresses in my real life that I've realized that while I do enjoy classics, the classics I love the most are the ones that have like happy light endings, like Charles Dickens. Even though Charles Dickens deals with a lot of dark topics, a lot of his endings are quite happy and nice, and I just like that a lot more. I like happy endings, I've decided. <laughs> uh, anyway, do you like my fire behind me? I, r I really like ambiances right now. It's starting to get cold. It got down to the 20s Fahrenheit. I will, I don't know the Celsius. I'll put that there. Uh, and it's so nice to have cool weather. I'm so ready for fall. The future is going to be bright. And I feel like with finishing my physical TBR, I can move past um, my like fixation on collecting books and that hobby. And I'll still be, you know, reading and collecting books, but not in the same manner I did before. And it feels like such a relief that I can move on and move past. And, um, you know, my husband and I are going to buy our first house and then hopefully we're going to have kids soon. And I, I get to like, learn so many things like I'm trying to learn how to bake bread and I remember cooking a lot with my mom when I was younger so I've never struggled with cooking like obviously I'm learning new techniques but I've never really struggled with cooking but bread bread I really struggle with haven't even attempted sourdough even though sourdough is like my favorite bread because sourdough starters and all the process fermentation and like baking it's too much it's too much and I guess the message I'll leave you in the end is whether you have a massive TBR or like a tiny TBR or no TBR at all maybe you don't read if so why are you watching this video but you know wherever whatever position you're in in life just don't worry about it. The, the world is too stressful to worry about things and worry does no one any good. So, you know, enjoy your massive TBR or make plans to finish your TBR like I did. Do, do whatever makes you happy because I think happiness is often hard to find in this world. And I feel lucky enough that I have found happiness with my husband, uh, with my wonderful little fluff fluff dog, which you, you can't probably see him in the background, but he's, uh, do you see him? Do you see him? <laughs> I'm never going to be able to put that back the way it was, but, um, that's very crooked now. I'm so sorry. Um, but whatever your life is, you know, just try to be happy. And I think that's all we should do in our lives because we can't control so many things outside of ourselves, but we control how we, we react to it. And we can try our best to um, be happy and be at peace, even if so little of the world is at peace. <laughs> so, uh, oh my gosh, that got philosophical and I've been rambling far too long. But what are your views on physical TBRs? Are you trying to read a bunch of yours? Do you like collecting books and you don't worry about finishing them all? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!